Do you ever have trouble making decisions? Has anyone ever told you that you are indecisive? Perhaps you've received that feedback on a performance review. Here's the thing. One of the key things we're looking for in our leaders is that they are decisive, that they're able to make decisions confidently and quickly. And if you struggle a little bit with doing that, stay tuned because I am going to give you a decision-making hack today that is going to help you be a more decisive leader. Welcome to the Surviving to Thriving podcast that helps women leaders in nonprofits get out of survival mode and thrive in both leadership and life. I'm your host, leadership development coach, Kathy Archer, and I help women leaders enjoy impactful leadership. Hey, my dear, I'm leadership development coach, Kathy Archer, and I help women leaders enjoy impactful leadership. And we do that when we develop the confidence to lead, like being able to be confident to make decisions. We maintain composure, so we keep it all together instead of falling apart, and we lead with integrity. And integrity is one of those things that we'll touch on it later today around making sure that you are aligned with who you are and the values you have, and you walk the talk, you say, you do what you say. And so when we have all of those three lined up, confidence, composure, and acting in integrity, wow, there's no way we cannot enjoy a leader, enjoy leadership. Now, many times we're not there. And part of the reason we're not there is we lack the confidence or the competence to do something. And that's one of the things with decision making and being decisive. We've never been taught how to make decisions. Think about that for a moment. And all the training you've had with leadership if you have had specific training on decision making, you are one of the lucky ones because most of us move up the ranks in our leadership position without learning how to make decisions. And so when a decision hits us and we lack the confidence, we worry we're going to make the wrong decision. I was talking to a leader yesterday and uh, she said sometimes she'll just kind of get into that worry mode around you know, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make the best decision. I'm worried this decision is going to be wrong. And it'll just kind of fester in her mind. And I said, so you think about it for hours? She goes, days. I said, does it keep you up at night? Absolutely. Now, just imagine the flip side. Her team's waiting for a decision. That's not an effective leader when her team is waiting days for a decision. But that's what we do is we get sucked into those thoughts in our head that tell us, we're not good at this. What if I make the wrong decision? What if it comes back to bite me in the butt? What if I get fired if I make this decision? Like there's so many implications around making decisions that it can cause us to just sort of freeze and not do anything. So I'm going to give you a quick hack and we're going to talk about three ways this hack kind of um, helps you be a more decisive decision maker. So when you learn this hack and learn to do this, you're going to be able to sort of slow down the decision making process and make better decisions. The hack is to make a decision with courage rather than with confidence. Far too often we wait for confidence to show up and we may never feel confident making a decision. So there's three ways that you can use courage to help you make those decisions. The first one is the courage to get it wrong. Part of the, the thought process we thought process that we have is that there's a right decision and a wrong decision. There is not a right decision and a wrong decision 90% of the time. There may be a better decision. There may be one that uh, moves you forward faster, but there's no right or wrong decision. And sometimes you just have to make a decision. And so part of that courage is A, the courage to make the decision and then the courage to communicate to the team I don't know if this is the right decision. I'm not sure that this is going to take us exactly where we want to go. But here's the thing. We need to get moving. And so if we decide something and then we put all of our energy behind it, I'm pretty sure that we can make it work. But if we don't decide or if we keep hemming and hawing or flipping back and forth, we're never going to get to where we want to be. So the courage to fail, get it wrong, mess up, and then communicating that confidently to your team in a way that is like, okay, it's not like I'm just making a decision, but I'm aware that this decision is a little bit dicey and there's not a right or wrong. I'm just saying that to your people. So that's one way to have courage. 
The second way to have courage is to ask for help. One way to ask for help is ask your team. You know what? We, I have this decision to make. I really want your input. Tell me how it's going to impact you. Tell me how you think we should move forward. Get their input. You can ask for the team's input. And then the flip side is you can ask for your boss's input or your board's input. Sometimes we think I'm going to look stupid or inept or this whole imposter syndrome comes out if we're not making a decision and we're asking for help. But the truth is people will respect you more when you ask for help than when you flounder and don't make decisions. So you can ask your team for help or you can ask your boss for help. Now, if I was your boss and you came to me and said, how do I make this decision? I'd probably come back and ask you a couple questions. And one of those might be, what does your gut tell you? The second one might be, what does your intuition tell you? The third question might be something like, if you weren't indecisive, if you weren't doubtful, if you weren't hesitating, what decision would you make? Or if you weren't second guessing yourself, what decision would you make? You can just use those questions in your head or you can pretend in your head, what would my boss say if I asked them? So sometimes you might actually go and have a conversation with them. Other times when you're feeling indecisive, you might slow down and have that courage to go, what would they say if I asked them? What advice would they give me or a mentor that you have or something like that? So first way is the courage to get it wrong. Second way is the courage to ask for help. The third way is, is actually a little bit flip is actually the courage to delay the decision. Sometimes we get so pushed that we think we have to make a decision today. And quite frankly, you're not confident to make that decision because you don't have everything you need to make that decision sometimes. Maybe you need more information. Maybe you do need to just get out of the hustle and bustle and step back and tune into your intuition and your gut. And you can't do that in the middle of a meeting when everybody's like, okay, you gotta make a decision, you gotta make a decision. Or, you know, people are sending you emails, have you decided yet? Or, you know, you walk down the hall and somebody's like, did you, did you figure that out yet? It's hard to make a decision when there's all this pressure on you. So the courage to say, yes, I'm going to make a decision, but I just need a little bit more time. Here's where we bounce back to that integrity piece. When you're clear and authentic and upfront with your team that you are taking time to make the decision, rather than just avoiding it and um, kind of shoving it under the rug, Again, they're going to respect you more, but you have to be clear. I haven't made the decision yet. I need some time to think about it and I'm gathering a little bit more uh, research. I will have made a decision by and then give them a date, give them a time so that they can stop hounding you and you can step back and in a much more mindful, conscious way, make those decisions. So that's the hack today is really to have the courage to step forward and make decisions. Here's the thing. A, feel competent, know how to make some decisions. B, have the courage to make decisions even though you don't feel as confident as you would like. And you can do that by being willing to fail, get it wrong, being upfront and honest, asking for help from your team or your boss. And then the third tip is to have the courage to just delay it or defer it for a little bit of time, not days or weeks, but to be really upfront and honest about that. This is what's going to help you gain the respect of your team, build the confidence in yourself to make decisions. And back to what I said at the very beginning, that's when you're going to start enjoying leadership is because you're going to feel better about the work you're doing. There's so much that goes on in, in a leader's head in a day. And if those thoughts are constantly talking down at you, you can't do this, you don't know how, this is crazy, you're going to make the wrong decision, then you're going to not enjoy leadership. So get a hold of your thoughts because that's really going to help you feel more confident in your leadership. Have the courage to step forward and say, I'm making a decision. It may not be the right decision. Have the courage to ask for help and have the courage to defer the decision shortly. When you do, my dear, you are going to get out of that survival place and you're going to move to thriving in both your leadership and life. If you found today's episode helpful, then you are going to love the training library. Many women leaders in nonprofits wish that they had a coach or a mentor to help them, but they don't believe that they or their organization can afford it. Oh, but you can. Inside of the training library membership site, you will not only get access to affordable and easily accessible ongoing personal and professional development training, 
you will also have access to a leadership coach at your fingertips. That way, when you hit those inevitable challenges that leadership will bring your way, you'll have both the resources and the support to navigate your way through them with confidence, composure, and while keeping your integrity intact. To find out more, head to kathyarcher.com slash library. If you are enjoying the show, I'd love it if you could leave me a comment or a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks for listening. Go make the rest of your day awesome. Awesome.